So, let me now give you a discussion, uh, a few of the key facts that are drawn from the pages of the report, and I'll go through this fairly quickly. The transport sector today produces 20% of the greenhouse gas emissions we have, making the identification of alternatives critical. Blend mandates have been enacted in 27 of the 50 countries that we've looked at, and 40 have some form of biofuels promotion legislation, and almost all of that has happened in the past few years. So this is a relatively recent phenomenon, but extremely widespread. Biofuels are the most competitive alternative today. Unlike hydrogen fuel cells, they're proven, they're here today. Unlike coal liquefaction, they're clean and renewable green energy right now. Biodiesel is now 2% of global editable uh, oil production, but is predicted to be five times that in just the next two years, with plans in place worldwide to increase capacity of biodiesel 15 times in the next several years, to over 38 billion tons. Mandated targets are growing all the time, and new feedstock options from inedible foods, like India's Jatroka plant, are becoming more and more feasible. Modern techniques are already making the process of production much more economical. As a result, global ethanol production has doubled since 2000. Investors are happier, too, because plants such as those in Brazil can now switch from producing sugar to ethanol depending on market conditions, and plants now in working uh, order in Scandinavia can actually switch between feedstocks depending on market conditions. The Western Hemisphere today, as Governor Bush indicated, produces 80% of the world's biofuels led by the U.S. and Brazil. Latin America alone produces 40% of the world's biofuels. Brazil alone accounted for 50% of total trade in ethanol in 2005, a quantity almost eight times larger than its next largest exporter. It produces this by using the tiny fraction of its agricultural area that Roberto referred to before, and in so doing has avoided 50 billion dollars in fuel imports over the past 30 years. What's more, although Brazil's subsidies stopped in this area in the 1990s, ethanol still costs only half the price of gasoline. Investment in clean energy has reached $38 billion in 2005. Ten years before, it was $5 billion. Recently, there have been a wave of announcements in this area. The one that strikes me as the most profound in some respects is that the Chinese government recently announced it will invest $187 billion in clean energy through 2020. That's more than every other country in the world has committed added up. The UK government's investing $2 billion in clean energy research center. British Petroleum has just alone committed $500 million to an energy biosciences research institute. Brazil and uh, Petrobras and Mitsui have announced the plans that I mentioned before. Now, if you look, you can see many of the countries in Latin America and the Caribbean have the land, the climate, and the labor to be well positioned to capture a significant percentage of this environment. It's hard to see that, but I'll hit some highlights. Colombia is the world's fifth largest producer and exporter of palm oil, fourth in terms of yield per hectare, and it boasts significant area for environmentally sound expansion and a strong regulatory framework already to support the development of the biodiesel industry. Guatemala is the world's fifth largest sugar exporter with 72% of its production going to export. Production of palm oil in Honduras has more than doubled over the last decade, and the country is now sixth in the world in terms of area cultivated with between 500,000 and a million hectares of additional land available for expansion. Costa Rica has developed an, ex uh, an ethanol export industry with 40 million liters per year, and it can go to the U.S. market through CAFTA without tariffs. Peru has significant potential in both ethanol and biodiesel production. Chile has potential for second generation technology going into uh, wood chips and its timber industry. We can't name them all now. Argentine soy, Caribbean, Mexican, and Central American sugar and palm and other feedstocks. There's not a country that is served by the Inter-American Development Bank, however, without an opportunity. A special research, planning, and financial challenges also associated with it. Most of the countries in the region are net oil importers, and the smaller countries in Central America and the Caribbean are particularly vulnerable to swings in oil prices. Biofuels can help reduce the vulnerability. Biofuels also have the potential in some countries as an export industry, including taking advantage of preferential access to the U.S. and the huge demand for biodiesel in Europe. However, think of all of this 
only 11 of the 22 countries in the region surveyed so far have some form of biofuels legislation. Only seven have biofuels mandates in place, and only five have a comprehensive national plan for achieving these targets. So there's a revolution taking place. Countries around the world are stepping forward. The greatest potential is in Latin America, but a huge amount of work needs to be done by governments in this part of the world. Also, there are no common global standards for ethanol or biodiesel, no truly international futures markets for ethanol or biodiesel, no big liquid ones that consumers will ultimately need, and tariff barriers exist, as Governor Bush pointed out, in many markets, including um, our own. Finally, the costs of all the alternative energy forms are plummeting, and so concepts as to what national energy policy should look like are changing. This is one of the key findings. Things are changing rapidly. Planning to build your biofuels future, your alternative energy future, based on how programs have developed over the past 10 years is a mistake because new technologies, new feedstocks, new demand, new funding, um, new regulatory environments are going to change the competitive landscape dramatically. So if we look beyond static facts, what we see is, say, six key trends. One, due to the forces of population growth, economic growth, industrialization, urbanization, developing countries are expected to increase energy cons consumption at a rate three times higher than industrialized countries, and that will increase their vulnerability to supply scarcity and volatile energy prices. Secondly, $100 billion is expected to be invested globally in clean energy by the year 2010, up from $58 billion in 05 and $5 billion in 95. So in just three years, you're going to see $100 billion going per year into this sector. The transport sector is projected to increase energy consumption 55% by 2030, so you see the scope of the challenge. If we just want to provide 5% of global transportation fuels from biodiesel by the year 2020, it will take $200 billion in investment. For Brazil to meet its current target of tripling ethanol production will require 40 to 60 per billion, or probably more, in Brazil alone. A recent McKinsey study suggested that if it wants to rise to meet export demand, it could be as much as $100 billion. The growth of biofuels will give the advantage to countries with long growing seasons, tropical climates, high precipitation levels, low labor costs and low land costs, and the planning human resources and the technological know-how to take advantage of them. To do this, we've identified, because we agree with Roberto, that you need a strategic vision. And we think that strategic vision needs to turn on four key areas. One is innovation. Brazil has been the undisputed center of ethanol innovation to date, but investment in research and development in biofuels is booming, and new disruptive technologies will dramatically change the playing field. Investment in innovation, particularly through regional initiatives and knowledge sharing, is critical for the region to remain a center of high value and value-added technology exports in biofuels, not simply the production of a commodity. Secondly, in terms of capacity expansion, the potential to expand productive capacity in Brazil and other countries is significant. Roberto talked about that. Interest from investors in helping to do this is significant, but what's needed are clear regulatory frameworks, tailored financing lines, zoning of territory to identify the appropriate areas for expansion and to mitigate environmental impact, and support is needed for the improvement of private sector transparency to encourage foreign investment. Infrastructure, particularly transport infrastructure, was the leading concern cited by almost every expert we consulted for our report, and we consulted scores of leading experts around the world. Investment in infrastructure requires a dual focus. You need to look at into facilitating the growth of the biofuels industry in underdeveloped regions, and you need to look outward with the focus on exports. It's ex estimated that Brazil alone needs about a billion dollars a year in infrastructure investment to meet its current capacity expansion goals and to maintain its competitiveness in global markets. In countries with new industries, investing in biofuels uh, distribution is necessary for the implementation of existing and planned blend mandates. And if you want 